Hello, Serge here for the Backyard Driving Range. All right, we have another in your own words. I'm gonna call this a great personal story. And this comes from Susan Dickey. And Susan says, Dear Serge, yesterday I went for what I hope is my final checkup with my orthopedist. I had a golf related injury in February. I crashed in the locker room on the way to the facilities and dislocated my shoulder, fractured the humerus, and tore a rotator cuff muscle. Yes, ouch, golf shoes and stone floors, it looked dry but wasn't, don't mix. Now five months later, I've played a bit of golf and have been hitting the ball well. The secret? I have consciously let my muscles relax and have limited my turn. I've let my arms go up in the air and not back into the sacred burial ground. If I let my arms angle back, my shoulder twinges. Thanks for the knowledge that more limited and upright swing will work pretty well and be comfortable when it counts. If I hadn't been following your method, I just would have thought that I couldn't swing yet. Back to the orthopedist. We spoke about the Open, and uh, she's talking about the British Open, because Sue signed as Susan, Sue Dickey, an American in London. All right, so she's living in London right now. So over there, you don't, you don't call it the British Open. They, it's the Open. We talked about the Open. And, I, and how I was doing my golf. I told him that I followed a website that had let me play pretty well even though I haven't completely healed. I demonstrated what my arms were doing during the swing. He got interested. He told me that he had played with a friend who had calcium in his shoulder joint. The doctor injected him in the locker room right before their game. He said his friend with his stiff shoulder played well for the first nine holes. At the tenth hole, the steroids finally did its job and the man said his shoulder felt great. As you can probably guess, the man's game fell apart. The doctor said the man's swing got a lot bigger, less controlled, and that was the end of it. And the surgeon broke into a great smile when he heard the name of your website and your nickname. It made my day. As an added note, I have no ensuing problems from playing golf. No pain, stiffness, or soreness. I have had problems from carrying things through groceries and such. I think I wouldn't be on the golf course yet if I thought I had to do the big shoulder turn with the angled club. Again, Sue Dickey, an American in London. Thank you, Sue. Let me talk about this thing right here. In the first paragraph, Susan said, I have con consciously let my muscles relax and have limited my swing. I've let my arms go up in the air and not back into the sacred barrel gun. If I let my arm angle back, my shoulder twinges. All right? I want to, I want to bring that point up. So Susan, by at the point of her injury right there that she's still healing she's got a built-in warning mechanism a built-in siren right a, a built-in alarm a, a, a built-in sensory feeling that if she goes too deep she's going to get that twinge so the success of a golf swing is making a swing where she doesn't get that twinge that's kind of like how I started figuring out this swing when I when I had my lower back problem I realized I could I could make a turn to here and there's no I could swing to here and there's no pain all right, let me get back straight to the camera. But if I, if I went to parallel and turned more, it was like a knife stuck in me. So I just figured out, okay, right here, no problem. Here's the problem. So I just put that, I put a space in my mind. Right here, no problem. There, a problem. So I, I kind of put that space. That's where I came up with my concept of ringing the bell. That was my position to transition and change. So if I could already start changing direction before I had the pain, I should never get it. Well, I had a pain. Susan had a pain. It worked. But to this day, I don't have any back pain. But why don't I go in the sacred barrel ground? Because I got the swing memorized. I got my point A and point B, which I call the, the uh, cactus effect. You know, just get into a position looking like a cactus. There's your back swing. And when you're standing here, there's your finish. Right here to left here. So the, reason, the, the big reason why I read this was because of that point right there. Now, as I said, Susan and I both had a pain that would, that would, that would give us a jolt. And we didn't want to get that jolt anymore because we know, as Dr. Armstrong once said, God gave human beings tension, stress, and strain because they are the prelude to pain. Once you reach pain, you've gone way too far. And way too far means you've gone too far in, 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 in doing whatever you're doing that's causing that pain. And in the case of a golf swing, you've gone too far in a big turn and, and too far back towards parallel. Okay? And so you can, you can build these things mentally in your mind by learning your place in space. Point A to point B and learning your place in space. So that, 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 that comment was 
that thought was really good, and that's why I really felt that I wanted to read this, because here's Susan, hurt herself, not from playing golf, but that she had an injury, and she got to playing golf sooner and better with the peak performance golf swing. That's living proof that this swing works. That's, that's the proofs I've seen a thousand times where golfers have showed up with lessons and, and barely couldn't even stand up, never mind swing a golf club. And once I finally explained the, the rudiments of in the mitt and up the tree and, 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 and why we only take a limited turn and we only need three-quarter back swing, and, and then when they get up and they start swinging, it's amazing how when you've been making a swing that, that is just locking your body down, how when you stop moving correctly, it's like, it's like, it's like a swinging massage. You go to a massage therapist and they, they massage your body and they, and they start loosening up those muscles. Well, golf swing done correctly can almost be like a massage. It can start loosening, loosening up and relaxing those muscles. And as Susan said, she relaxed her arms even a little bit more before she started. Now, the thing I will close up with on this is, is you can sometimes, maybe some people do really have too tight a grip in arms, but I don't see that very often. I usually see the opposite. Remember, you, you want... You want athletically readiness, which means your grip in your arms and your whole body has to, be, has to be athletically ready, ready to spring, ready to jump, ready to move and maintain its, its muscle tone. So you have to have a good muscle tone, not too tight, but not too light, not too loose, just right. All right, so it's obvious that even though Susan said she loosened her arms, I guarantee you she had, she had to have had good muscle tone to make a good swing, a good controlled swing. All right, so with that, there's words from, in her own words from Susan, about how well the peak performance swing has allowed her to keep, to play golf and, and, and not be in pain. Okay, well, that's it for the search for today, and I'll be talking with you all again soon.